Okay, so for this example, what we're gonna do is we're gonna solve for a truss, and specifically, we're gonna solve for member forces BC, BE, and FE using the method of sections. So in this problem, you know, we identified the members, we know what members we're solving for. In this case, we already have the support reactions. I've, you know, worked these out ahead of time and, and given them to you. Uh, and the next thing that we wanna do is we wanna cut the truss to the members that need to be solved for, right? And then what we're going to do is we're going to apply the equations of equilibrium to solve for member forces. And you know, you might remember in the last video if you watched that one where we have a horizontal, you know, top chord and a horizontal bottom chord. Right away, we can solve, you know, for one component of this this web using some of the forces in the y direction. Well, in this case, you can maybe you can picture it, but we're going to end up with, you know, components in the y direction in multiple members now. So right now, you know, we can't necessarily solve directly for any one member using some of the forces in the y direction. So what it leads us to is it leads us to, in problems like this, we really want to be able to use the, the sum of moments. So this equation is super powerful with method of sections, and when we do that, what we're going to specifically look for is where the lines of action of two unknown forces intersect. So what that means is, you know, some points here, like for example, point B, you know, force BC and force BE are going to intersect at that point. That's going to be a great spot to some moments. So let's get started. So first to draw the free body diagram, all I did here was I just copied down our, our you know, structure from above. I'm going to go in ahead and delete these middle members because those are the ones that we're trying to solve for. Those are the forces that we're trying to solve for, right? And when I delete them, what I want to do is I want to draw new unknown forces in the same direction as those members, but I always like to draw them in tension, so always pulling away from the joint. Not necessarily left or right, but you can see here it's always pulling away from the joint. And then we need one more here, you know, again, pulling away from the joint, pulling away from the joint. So what we can do is we can label those, you know, so this one's gonna be BC, this one's gonna be BE, and this one's gonna be FE. So, you know, for all of you guys studying for the fundamentals of engineering exam, you guys can do it, all right? So. Again, I like to show everything in tension and assume in tension. That way, if I get a negative value, I know that it's actually in compression. So the next thing we want to do is, you know, after we've drawn our overall free body diagram, kind of identify these forces. Uh, now I need to pick one of the sections. You can take the left side or the right side. You know, I'm just going to pick the left side. Okay, it, it doesn't really make a huge difference, but I'm going to pick the left side. So let's copy down the left side and we'll move down a little bit, you know, and, and paste this in. And I'm actually going to make it a little bit bigger here just so we can see things a little bit more easily, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to come back in and we're going to draw in our components. Okay, so here we have some components. And we know we're going to have BC. We know we're going to have, you know, uh, X component, Y component here. So I'm going to just going to label as BCX. This is going to be BCY. Uh, similarly, we're going to have something for BE. So I'm going to put in my component of BEX and you know B E Y. Okay, so now we have our components identified. The other thing that I need to show in here, and uh, I apologize, I didn't put it on sooner, but I need to give you some dimensions. So the dimensions here, we're gonna say this is four feet, you know, the height is, is three feet, and that's gonna be consistent kind of for the whole truss itself. So if we come back and we're looking at the truss, you know, we know that this whole distance here is you know, four, four, and four, or this is gonna be 12 feet, and this whole height here, you know, is going to be, uh, you know, three and three or six feet, okay? So let's come back down and, and keep solving, right? What we know is the equations of equilibrium have to hold. We know that sum of moments, sum of forces, and sum of forces, you know, in the x and y direction have to hold and have to equal zero. So what we wanna do here is we wanna take you know, we want to take those equations and apply them and, and solve for a force. But what you notice here is right away, uh, you know, we have a lot of unknown forces. So we have, you know, two unknown components in the y direction. We have one, two, three unknown components in the, the x direction, right? So what I want to do is I want to sum moments. And previously what I said up above was we're looking for a point where a lot of these forces intersect. And you can see a lot of action happening, you know, kind of right around and centered around joint B. Okay, so that means that's, that's probably a good place to start. So when we sum moments about point B, we so that equals to zero. What we know is any force that passes right through point B is not gonna cause a moment about point B. So what forces are left? Well, the forces that are left, you know, that don't pass through point B 
or this two kips, the four kips, and Fe. So what that means is this equation is going to allow us to solve directly for Fe. So to write that equation, first we're just gonna write down all our forces, you know, that causes a moment. So we have, you know, four kips is causing a, a clockwise rotation with a moment arm of three feet. We have Fe with a positive rotation that's clock or counterclockwise. Again, that's times three feet. And, and again, to think about this, these forces, which is kind of cool, uh, have the same line of action. So they're all along this, this you know, horizontal line here. They're the same line of action, which means they have the same distance from point B, perpendicular distance, and that's going to be three feet. So that's the moment arm for both the four kips and the FE. In addition, we have two kips, which is causing a clockwise rotation, so that's gonna be negative two kips times the moment arm for this, right? So if we look at the line of action, that force, the moment arm is gonna be four feet. Okay, so we can put that in. We can rearrange this and solve for Fe, 6.67 kips. So we can box that in, and we know since it's positive, what we assumed originally was correct. So that means this is going to be in tension. It's pulling away from the joint, it actually is. Okay, so that's pretty cool. But still, you'll notice now, we still have um, two unknown forces. We still have BC, which includes BCX, BCY. Uh, we also have BE, which includes BEX and BEY. So what we wanna do now is, what I like to do is I like to look for another location where we have uh, have two of these unknown forces intersect. Okay, so there's there's two other locations that this actually occurs. So one, you know, if we take take BC and just extend its line of action, you'll notice it passes right through point A. Okay, if we extend uh, BE, right, we can do that as well. And you'll notice that BE passes through a point over here, which if we come up off the diagram, you'll see that this actually, you know, both of these have E in the in the um, in their member names, and this point over here is actually also point E, right? So we know that those forces uh, intersect there. So what that means is good places to sum moments for this problem are going to be point E and point A, right? Because basically what we're going to do is we're going to eliminate two of our, you know, the the member forces we're going to uh, we need to solve for and isolate the other one. So let's take a look at that. Okay, let's first maybe start some of the moments about point A. Okay, so to write some of the moments about point A, what we want to do is we want to find all the forces that are causing a moment about point A. Okay, so if we come to point A, put our you know pencil on point A, we can look and say, well, what forces are not passing uh, right through point A. And we know the four kips is, we know the two kips is, but look at this, right? With BC, if we take the resultant force here of BC, BC does, passes right through point A. So BC does not cause a moment at point A. What that means is if we were to look at BCY and BCX, the resultant from that would be zero. That, you know, BCY and BCX would not cause a moment about point A. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at BC and, and eliminate that one from causing a moment about point A. So what's left? Well, we know what's left. We can see the six kips is left. So we know six kips, you know, times four feet, and this is causing a rotation that's clockwise, so that's gonna be negative. And we know, you know Fe passes right through point A, four kips, two kips. What else do we have here? Well, we have BEX and BEY. So we could look at both of those or we could say we know a moment is basically just a force times a distance and we can apply that moment anywhere along its, its line of action and still have the same effective moment. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these, you know, these components here and we're gonna move them down. So we're gonna take them down and we're gonna move them and actually just apply them further down along the line of action here until we get to point E. So if we apply these at point E, it's still the same forces. So we're still gonna have, you know, B, E, Y and B, E, X, but now we're just applying them at point E along the same line of action. Okay, that's really important. You gotta be along the same line of action. But why do we like doing that? We like doing it because now you'll notice BEX passes right through point A. So BEX, when applied at point E, is not causing a moment about A, but BEY is. So what this does is it allows us to isolate the BEY component 
and solve for it, okay? So you'll notice BEY is causing a clockwise rotation, so we're also gonna write minus BEY, and you'll notice here the distance to E is gonna be another four feet, so that distance is gonna be you know, times eight feet. Pretty cool. So what we can do here is we can say, well, all that equals zero because there's no other forces that are you know, not passing through point A. So when we solve this, right, we can put BEY times eight to the other side, and what we end up getting is BEY is going to equal, you know, minus, what, 24 divided by eight is minus three kips. So what that looks like is we have BEY, which is minus three, and the minus means our initial assumption of compression was wrong, or um, tension was wrong, so it is in compression, right? And now we can take this and solve, once we know BEY, we can solve for BEX and we can solve for BE because the components in a truss force, uh, the, the components of it, one force in the truss member have to be um, related to the other components. So what's that look like? Let's draw our force triangle, right? So we have BE here, you know, BEY, and if we go tip to tail, we get BEX. Similarly, our geometry is going to be, we have three, four, five, so these are triangles, and what we know is the force geometry is proportional to the member geometry. So what that means is BEY over BEX has to equal the same ratio, three over four, which means BEX is going to equal, you know, four thirds of BEY or this, you know, BEY or BEX is going to equal minus four kips. So next we can solve for BE and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, you know, BEY over BE has to equal, what do we get? We get three over five. So we get BE equals five thirds of BEY and BE equals, you know, minus five kips. And, and you'll notice the minus sign carries through in each of these is in compression. So I'm just gonna put a C for compression. Okay, so that's pretty cool. So we've gotten, you know, two of our member forces and, you know, just cause it's fun, maybe you don't find it fun, but just because it's fun, why don't we take a look and see if we can use some of the moments to solve for the last one. So we solve for FE, we solve for B, BE. So now we wanna solve for, you know, BC. So let's take a look at that and, and let's do it. So. Where would we want to take moments to isolate BC? Well, if we take moments at this other point of intersection between our two unknown forces, between BE and FE, you'll notice this is point E, and you'll notice that allows us to take moments at C, or well, take moments at E and, and basically you know, isolate BC. That's, that's the only force really that's unknown that doesn't act through you know, this point E. Okay, so that's pretty cool, so let's do that. And actually to do that, I'm just gonna redraw this a little bit so that we can see it a little bit more easily. Okay, so I'll just come down here and I'll paste it in so we have a little bit more room here. And I'm gonna delete a few of the things that we don't need. Okay, so I cleaned this up a little bit and I you know, erased a few things just to make it hopefully a little bit clearer. So now what we wanna do is, I said we wanna take the sum of the moments about another point here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take sum of moments about point E so that we don't have FE or BE acting you know, at that point. Like FE and BE are acting but they're not causing a moment about point E. So if we do that and we say sum of the moments about point E, well, what is remaining? Okay, well, the four kips acts right through point E, that doesn't, but our two kips does not. So we know we're gonna have like minus two kips, you know, times eight feet. What else? Well, we have the six kips, so we're gonna have, you know, plus six kips times four feet. And then we know we've isolated, you know, BE and FE from this. So we've isolated BC as, as causing a moment because BE and FE both pass right through point E, so they don't cause a moment but BC does cause a moment. Now again, what we wanna do is we wanna look for a convenient place to apply this force along its line of action so that we can you know, make it work for us easily. So when I look at this, what I see is, well, I like horizontal and vertical because then I only have to deal with one of the components. So what I like to do here is, I, you know, even with this one, I can say, well, if I come straight up you know, from point E, what's this point up here? And interestingly enough, that's point C from our original diagram. So this is, you know, point C. And if we apply, you know, force BC at point C, what we're gonna get are these components, right? I, I raised them, but I'm drawing them back in. We're gonna get these components of BCX 
and BCY applied at point C. Okay, so this is kind of cool because now what we know is the force BCY is going to pass right through E and not cause a moment about it, but BCX is not. That is going to cause a moment. So we can say, well, minus you know, BCX, and we can look at this distance, right? So this distance here is going to be the moment arm, which in our case we know, well, we have three feet plus another, you know, another three feet over here. So that's going to be a total of, you know, six feet. So this times six feet is going to equal zero. So when we do the math out, we're, you know, we're going to put BCX times six to the other side. And what we're going to end up with is we're going to end up with BCX equals, you know, 1.333 kips in, well, it's, we get a positive value here. So that's going to be in tension. Now, does that make sense? Well, I, you know, the, I guess what happens is we have a, a decent force up here pulling at point C, and I didn't include that in. You'll notice if we come back to our original diagram, we're, right? We have, we're taking, you know, we're applying this force at point C, but we don't include the four kips because we've only taken the left side, and that four kips isn't on the left side. So now when we come back down and we solve, you know, we get BCX equals 1.33. So we can go through this force geometry. We can apply similar things with three, four, five triangles. Uh, when we do, what we're going to get is we're going to get BCY. You know, maybe give it a try at home. Uh, you know, pause the video and see if you can get it. But BCY, we're going to get is equal to one kip, and BC, we're going to also get equal to uh, 1.67 kips. And these are both going to be in tension. Okay, so. That is a, a very cool way of being able to use these sum of moments equations and also think about where you apply your forces to get what you're looking for. So I hope that helps. You know, I hope that you can think about this force as you know, being applied anywhere along its line of action and causing the same moment you know, when, uh, when you sum moments about point B, or point E in this case. In this case, we picked you know, point C because that was convenient. We eliminated BCY and only were left with BCX. Hey, so I hope that helps. And, uh, you know, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. But otherwise, keep working hard, moving onward and upward. Talk to you soon.